Hi again. Just a, a quick bonus, tagged on to the end of that last video while I have time. I realise I didn't really change the game, so I'm going to quickly help you sort some of the bullet issues. Um, firstly, so that we don't have to keep clicking, I can save my poor little finger the effort. I'll do it so we can just hold the mouse button in. So we're going to be working in, is it in the turret class? Yeah. We'll work in the turret class, we'll set it so that you just click and hold to fire and why not add a few more bullets as well so we can fire more than one bullet at a time spread them out in an arc that might be quite good and why not have the ships move a bit more naturally we'll have them turn towards a target instead of snapping to it so let's start with the mouse issue at the moment in the turret class we have this click listener that listens out purely for a click I'm going to change that now I don't know why it says and click We'll listen out for a mouse down this time, so add a mouse down listener. I'm going to edit this, mouse event dot mouse down. And instead of having fire straight off the bat, I'm going to have start fire, I think. So when we press the mouse down, notice that that doesn't mean holding it in, that just means when the button first goes down, we're going to start firing. I'm going to copy this. Underneath I'll paste it and put a mouse up listener. So this is when we physically let go of the mouse button. And we'll call that, as you probably guessed, stop fire. What we'll need to do is store a variable that lets us know if we're currently holding the mouse. So up here in the variables part I'm going to add a private variable called firing and make it a boolean so it's either true or false and we'll start it as false so when the class is made it's got a a boolean variable called firing that's set to false which means it's not firing at that current time now these two mouse listeners are going to change that so if we do a private function start fire responding to a mouse event Got a bit of a cold coming on, so if I snivel, sorry. Start fire, dead simple, we just put firing equals true. Copy the whole thing, and you can probably see what's coming. We'll edit stop fire here, let's just set that to false. So far so good. That means that this fire function is going to have to change and we'll just make it a standalone function, we'll make it private as well and remove the need for a mouse event, it's just going to be a function that we'll call when we're firing so let's have a look in our in our update function let's say if firing so oops. Um, comment that in. If we are currently holding the mouse down, firing. That's the same as writing if firing equals equals true. So just saying if firing is the same as asking if it's set to true. They both do the same thing. So if firing, we want to fire. Comment that in. let's have a look at this fire function just to check so that says if we're allowed to shoot so if the shot cooldown is okay spawn a bullet and fire it let's check that it works so hopefully now I can just hold the mouse button in and ah, yeah that makes life a lot easier I can spam and miss to my heart's content without having to click like a madman I've got a knuckle the size of a ping pong ball from mouse clicking so this is gonna do me a world of good What else did I say? Oh yeah, we'll fire multiple bullets, should we? If um, if we set another variable here, private var, I'm going to add a private to the front of that one as well. Anything that you can get away with having as private, you should do, or protected. I, haven't, I don't think I've covered protected yet, but we'll get to that. Private var, um, num 
to shoot. That's an integer, and we'll just I don't know set it to three. Fire three bullets every time. Go back to our fire function, and now instead of just spawning the one bullet, we're going to have a, a for loop. We'll say for var i equals zero, i is less than num to shoot i plus plus. So we'll spawn as many bullets. Just close the for loop there. Tab it all in. We'll spawn as many bullets as we've put into that variable up top. So at the moment we'll fire three. Problem is they'll all be on top of each other at the moment. So we are, I'm firing three bullets. You can see they die instantly because we're hitting them three times at once when really they should take two hits. What we need to do is spread these bullets out. So this rotation needs some adapting. So let's have a spread. I think we'll have a we'll have another const spread. And we'll set that to five five degrees between every shot. So the rotation of the first bullet, or well of any bullet, will be let's say rotation is the rotation of the ship minus spread times uh, what am I thinking here? Spread times num to shoot over two. So we're taking say we've got three bullets and each one is meant to be five degrees spread. That's not that's not right actually is it? Anyway what I'm trying to what I'm thinking in my head we've got a spread of five degrees and we need to shoot three bullets. The difference between them should be three times the spread, but that's not right. They'll be spread over 10 degrees, not 15. So we need to do num to shoot minus one. So we're gonna spread them out based on one less than the amount to shoot. If I just try and doodle what I mean in a new file. Say we're meant to be firing in this direction, we'll do it flat. But if we're firing, th firing three bullets, we actually want to shoot one there and one there. And this spread here is five degrees. So in the case of three bullets, we've actually only got two gaps to consider, which is why I've taken one off. Save that epic drawing. So I've taken one off the number to shoot. So we've got the rotation minus spread times number to shoot minus one all over two, because we only want to go to the left halfway. And then we'll add in brackets, I times spread. I just check that it's all okay. I think that's right. Fingers crossed, test it. Should be firing three bullets with a spread of five degrees. If I just fire straight up, does that look right? It kind of looks right to me. Let's maybe put the spread up and the number of bullets up to get a better idea. Put the spread to 10 degrees and the number to shoot up to 5. So we should have 5 bullets spread across 40 degrees, is that? Pew pew. That looks okay to me. Yeah. It's almost becoming a game. Still a long, long way to go really. I'm, I'm panicking a bit about fitting it all in. I have to get much more free time. Didn't seem to want to spawn any then when I killed them all. Scared them all off. That's weird. Let go and then they spawn. Ah, I know why. Never mind, we'll cover that later. It's just because in the game we're only spawning ships based on the number of children, which is totally irrelevant. What else are we going to do? Make the ships fly properly. Right, so that's the turret class done. Let's go to the ship class. Find where they turn. So we made some use of our static class there, didn't we? Instead of just snapping to point 
at um, at the target. Let's let's think of where it is. So we'll have a variable up here. We'll say var desired rotation, and we'll cut this bit. We'll just move it. So what we act, the desired rotation is the angle from the ship to the target. But the actual rotation will change based on that. So I think what we'll need to do is say uh, desired rotation is where we want to be. So I'll have to take the current rotation off that. So I'll have var angle diff equals desired, right, this might not work, desired rotation minus rotation. Might have some issues on the, uh, the bounds of that, but we'll see how it goes. So it goes, I've, I've got an idea how to, th to fix that if it doesn't work. And then we'll have an if, we'll say if angle diff is bigger than 2 so if we're more than 2 degrees out rotation equals rotation minus 2 might need to be a plus 2, I might have that the wrong way around I think I do let's try this plus 2 um, another similar Comparison if angle diff is less than minus two, rotation equals rotation minus two. I have no idea what that's going to turn out like. Let's try it. Ships are slowly, yeah, slowly turning to face the target. That seems to be working. Let's see, let's watch this one. Where's he off? Yeah, kind of flying around. It look looks sensible enough. Maybe it was just a good guess. Have we lost any? I think we have. <laughs> Let's just zap a few of them. Yeah, it's not working perfectly. I think if they're ever coming to a point where they're 180 degrees off, they're just carrying on the wrong way. So let's just try and wrap this. Let's say while angle diff is greater than 180, we'll take 360 off it. Angle diff minus equals 360. And while angle diff is less than minus 180, angle diff plus equals 360. Spell diff wrong then. Stick a semicolon on for good practice. Try that. Hopefully they won't run off. They should realise they're going the wrong way and come back, I hope. Have any of them gone for good? Are they all staying? I'll just keep talking absolute nonsense for a while while we check. In theory, they should all stay close. The one issue we might have is if they get in orbit around their target, they might never reach it and pick a new one. So if you see any doing constant circles, that's why. But they all seem to be staying around, which to me seems like it works. So fairly happy with that. Ah, did I say I'd do anything else? What have we done? We've done it so you can hold the mouse in. Didn't even shoot any of them then. You can hold the mouse in, you can shoot more than one bullet, and the ships are looking a bit more sensible. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Right, I'll leave you with that. I'm going to have to go. Next video, we'll try and advance the game. I'm going to put the menu screen in. We're going to start shaping it into a game because at the moment I've just been doing it for the sake of showing you the talents, the, the skills you'll need for making your own game. 
which is entirely the point of the series, by the way. I wouldn't worry too much if you don't make this game exactly, as long as you understand what I'm doing. You can make your own games.